Introduction to Hashing. In this part, we will learn a new efficient searching algorithm. Yeah. It is very important. Yeah. So although uh, in our final, we will not have any questions in this topic, yeah. but this uh, you know, idea, topic very important. So we better, so we learn this topic. Yeah. But after that, you can do a, the quiz six to improve your quiz grades. Yeah. All right, so let's start. Yeah. First, so let's look at the problem we want to solve. Okay, all right. Here, we look at a very general problem. Find a data item with a given key. Yeah. So, you know, search or search problem. Yeah. Search some data item, but you need to have a search key. Yeah. So it is very general. Yeah. All right. So given a collection of data dynamically. Yeah. So here we consider the real world situation. The data comes in on the fly dynamically. Yeah. So we keep accepting new data items. Yeah. So that's the typical situation. We run a real world application. When we run this application, we get customer data. Right? Yeah. So when you you know run some specific application, you know, like e-commerce, so customers make order of you know products, yeah, right? So you keep getting new data. Yeah. So after you collect the data, many times you need to do the search. Okay? Search certain special data items in that collection. Yeah. So you want a very efficient search algorithm. Yeah. Each data item is identified with a unique key. Unique. Yeah. So with that key unique, now you want to find that particular item quickly. Yeah. Very efficient. So that's the goal. All right. How to make the data search efficient? So we want to discuss, you know, the idea solving this problem. Yeah. Let us examine known search algorithms. And we try to get some idea from it. Yeah. Here, let's, so let me draw a table. Uh, you know, list all the known algorithms, but at the same time, we want to get an idea for our new search algorithm. So you can see four columns. The first one, linear search. We're familiar with the linear search. Okay. Second one, binary search. Yeah. So we, you know, learn all the properties about the binary search. The third one, index search. So we do not know what, what's that index search. No. We haven't learned this kind of search, right? Yeah. But actually, because this search algorithm is so trivial, okay? everyone has the experience using this search algorithm, but we do not give it this name. And here, in order to make our discussion easier. Here we use this index search as its name. The idea, very simple, very straightforward. You have an array, okay, array. Each element has an index in the array, right? In order to find one item in the array, you need to know its index, right? Given that index, you can find that item immediately. That's the index search. So that's the so-called index search. So nothing new, right? Yeah. And usually people do not bother to call that name. 
because so trivial, right? It's not something fancy. Yeah. So that's why not many people know its name. Yeah. All right. So here we just use this name temporarily for our discussion because this trivial search algorithm is very important to inspire our idea to create this new search algorithm. All right, yeah. Then the new algorithm. So we want to make some wish list. What properties do we like to have for our new search algorithm? Yeah. So we, you know, before we start working on it, we want to have some, you know, desired properties in this new algorithm. All right, so let's compare these search algorithms in these categories. Data structure, efficiency, ordering, ordering data, you know, uh, only these algorithms only work under ordering data or unordering data. Yeah. Dynamic data, efficient sorting. Yeah. These you know, commonly used properties. Yeah. All right, so let's do one by one. First, data structure. Yeah. The first three, simple, array data structure. Yeah. The new one, new one at this point, we do not have clear idea on it. So we need to design that data structure. Okay, yeah, painting. Yeah. So we need to look at that later. Yeah. Efficiency. How efficient to find that, you know, the item to be searched for with given key? Yeah. So that's the question. Yeah. The first one, bigger of n, linear search. Yeah. You do the linear search, you know, that's the efficiency. Yeah. The binary search, much better, bigger of log n. Much better than the linear search. Index search, really fast. Big or one, because you're given index, then you get there right away. So you find that item, big or one. Yeah. For our new search algorithm, we like to have the similar performance as the index search, close to close to bigger of one. Yeah. It could be slightly slower than that of the index search, but not much slower. Yeah, pretty close. And it should be better than binary search. It should be better than binary search. Okay, oh, yeah. here, what I mean, the wish list we want to have. Reasonable wish list. Yeah, so not not to be too greedy, yeah, all right. Ordering, when we apply the algorithm, can we apply it on what kind of data? Ordered, unordered, right? Yeah, linear search, unordered data, okay? Binary search, it must be unordered data. Otherwise, it doesn't work, okay? So here you can see, the requirement much stronger. Yeah. Index search unordered. Yeah. And for our new algorithm, we also want unordered. Yeah. So we don't want that very strict requirement on the data order. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Dynamic data. Yes. Yeah. So what's the meaning here? Dynamic data, yes. It means if you use this search algorithm, apply it on array of dynamic data, when new data comes in, you can always apply this search algorithm, right? Yeah, so that's why it's yes. Yeah. But for the binary search, the situation is different because you need to maintain the order of the data that is very expensive, costly, very expensive. Because when new dynamic data comes in, your order will be violated. So you need to fix it. Yeah. 
but the cost to fix that order very expensive. Yeah. So that's why the step costly. Yeah. So that's the big drawback of binary search. Yeah. Big drawback. Yeah. Next one, index search. We do not require the data to be ordered. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. And for our new data structure, you know, search algorithm, yeah, we we like the similar property. So we do not require the data to be ordered. Then the search algorithm will be more useful. Yeah. You know, almost under any situation we can apply the search algorithm. But binary search too restrictive. If the data is not ordered, you cannot apply. Yeah. So that's why in our wish list, we like to have the property, the search algorithm can be applied on unordered data. Yeah. The last one, efficient sorting. Yeah. Sometimes in our applications, we may need this property, efficient sorting, yeah. because we want to generate the existing data items in based on some order yeah yeah you know for our application sometimes we like data to be sorted yeah if you need that feature then your search algorithm so there is a efficiency issue because sorting is very expensive yeah so if you use the linear search to maintain your dynamic data in order to get efficient sorting it is you don't have that feature okay you need to spend a lot of time to get data sorted yeah. okay but binary search you have it because the data already sorted yeah. if you maintain that order although you need to you know spend a lot of time, energy, you know, cost, expenses. Yeah. But after you pay that much, you will get that property. Yeah. Index search, no. Yeah. If you want to get data sorted, very expensive. Yeah. And our new sorting algorithm to be more realistic, we cannot make it support efficient sorting yeah yeah it is hard yeah efficient sorting it is hard yeah it is you know not that cheap yeah, yeah. to be more realistic yeah. all right so here that's the you know we before we design this algorithm we try to have some overview yeah. So look at the position of this new search algorithm. Yeah. So now, summary. Yeah. The data structure is not given. Yeah. And we need to create it. Yeah. But we have freedom to choose what specific data structure we like to have. Okay. So we can add a lot of new properties in our data structure. So that's good. Yeah. The second thing we want to make this new search algorithm and a new data structure to support dynamic data efficiently. Yeah. All right. So that is the our first round discussion on this new search algorithm. Yeah. Second, we want to, you know, get more detailed information on this algorithm. Yeah. Generalize the idea of the index search. Yeah. Why we put the index search here? Because our new search algorithm has a lot of similarity with that index search. We want to borrow some nice property in index search yeah so let's look at the first property direct addressing for index search 
given index, you'll find the location, basically follows direct addressing rule, right? Yeah. So the key, yeah, index, that's the key. Yeah, special case of a key, yeah. given a key, and you get an index of array immediately. Directly, okay? Direct addressing. The key value is the same as the index of array. Okay, straightforward mapping. Yeah. If you treat that as a mapping, yeah, that's a simple mapping. Yeah. Now we want to look at the problem. Why it is so fast but not very useful? The index search actually is not very useful. You know, not many people use that way yeah, because it has a very big problem. Okay, very big problem. So it cannot be very useful. Yeah. So the problem is mainly due to the long keys. Long keys. Yeah. If you have long keys, this algorithm is almost useless useless. Yeah. Here, let me use some simple example to explain this main drawback. Yeah. All right. Suppose in a class we have 40 students. Yeah. So usually a class with 40 students, it's a big class, right? Yeah. But this 40, this number is not, not a big number. Okay. It's a relatively small number, right? Yeah. Comparing the number of data items we need to handle in the real world. This is a very small number of data items. Yeah. But we need certain keys to, you know, identify these students. So here, let, let us consider we use student numbers. Yeah. We know there are many digits in student number, right? Yeah. Seven or eight or nine. Yeah. So that number, long keys. Yeah. So it looks like this. Yeah. We have many digits in student numbers. Yeah. Now, if we use the index search, if we create an array using the student number as the index, now you can see the huge problem. Huge problem. So you, you cannot even think about it. Think about using this method. You cannot. Yeah. Suppose seven digit. Yeah. So let me just use some, you know, relatively small number. Seven digit index. What is the size of your array? Okay. Yeah. Tens of millions, right? Tens of millions of locations in your array. That's a huge array. How much memory space do you need to use? Right? Tens of millions of memory space you need to use. But you only store 40 students. Almost 99.9% something space wasted in your array. Only a very tiny portion in the array is used. Okay, that's not efficient. Okay, that's not efficient. So that is the reason this index search is not useful. So people even you know, never think about using this method in real world applications. Okay, all right. Yeah. So the conclusion. We cannot use keys as indexes directly. So that's the conclusion. Yeah. So we have to do, you know, we have to improve this drawback. Yeah. We have to fix this big problem. Yeah. All right. So the idea, yeah. how to make keys shorter. Okay. If we can make keys shorter, then we solve a big part of it. Yeah. But the situation is, in the real-world situation, 
You cannot make keys shorter. The keys are those numbers. You have to use the same keys as given, right? For example, the student number. Okay, you make the student number shorter? No. That's the number that people use. We cannot make those numbers shorter. Yeah. So now we change a different view. So we cannot make those keys shorter, but we can do something different. Yeah. So we map keys to slots. Yeah. Here we have 40 slots, right? A total we just have 40 slots. Yeah. Given a student number, can we use some special way to map a student number to one of the 40 slots? Right? Yeah. If you can do that, that's something like we make the key shorter, right? Yeah. Through mapping, we do a mapping operation to kind of make keys shorter. Yeah. Okay. But actually, we do not change the original keys, but we generate some new temporary keys, things like that. Shorter temporary keys we can use to find a location in the slot. So that's the idea. Yeah. So with that, we need to look at a mapping strategy. How do you make that mapping? So that's the key. Yeah. So that's the critical step we need to do in this algorithm design. Yeah. But first, we like to know what is a good mapping. Yeah. How do you describe a good mapping strategy? Right? You need to have some standard criteria, yeah, criteria to describe the you know mapping strategy. Yeah. First, fast calculation. When you do mapping, you, you, you do calculation, right? Yeah. You, you do some computation. Yeah. We require that computation must be very fast. If it takes too long, that's useless. Okay? So that mapping is useless. Yeah. The first. Second, evenly distributed among all the slots. Yeah. So we don't want some of the slots will be mapping frequently, but some other slots never be mapped. So that's not good. You waste your resource. So we want you know evenly distributed mapping locations on those slots. Then we can use our resource more efficient. Yeah. But may not be you know completely evenly but almost Right? Yeah. We can make, you know, almost, almost evenly distributed. How about that? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This step. Not sensitive to any pattern. Yeah. Here, you may not be able to understand the meaning of the pattern here. Yeah. But later, I will use some simple example to explain this pattern thing. Sometimes for the given keys, it may follow some special pattern. So that's possible in a real world situation. The keys may not be random. So if the key is random, then we can say there is no special pattern there. Random numbers. But many times the keys may not be random numbers. So there is some special pattern inside those keys. Here we want our algorithm, even for those keys with some special pattern, yeah, we can still handle, we can still make the slots distribution almost even. So that's the meaning. Okay? Yeah, that's the meaning. Yeah. So if we can find a mapping with these properties, then we can say, so it is a good mapping strategy. Okay, so we try to 
find something like that when we design this new search algorithm. Yeah. All right. Next, for the implementation part. Yeah. So we need to find the details how to implement this new algorithm. The implementation, here you can see mainly focuses on choosing appropriate math functions. Because mapping basically related to math functions. Right? You need to find some special math functions. Then you plug in the index number, the key number. Yeah, could be key number, right? You plug in the key. Yeah, key. Key we can convert to you know some number, right? Math, yeah. So you have that, you plug it into the special math function, then the slot number will be generated. Slot number will be generated. So they use that slot number you find the location in your data structure for your current data item. So that's the idea. So that's the simple idea. Yeah. And these math functions we call the hash functions. Yeah. Hash functions. Yeah. So if you have some good idea to design hash functions, then you pretty much solve this problem. Efficient searching problem, you pretty much solve this problem. Okay? Although, so there's some uh, related uh, other issues you need to fix, yeah. but you solve the main part of the problem. Yeah. All right, so this is the introduction part. Yeah. In our next video, we will look at the hash function design. How to design a good hash function. Yeah. All right, so let me stop the video now.